everybody, this is Keith Hilson with the Trombone Shop at Schmidt Music again here. I uh, just happened to be doing a little bit of maintenance on one of our horns here with a Thayer valve and thought it might be a good opportunity to just take a minute and show everybody what's going on with the Thayer valve. You know, for a lot of us, we've never had a chance to actually dig into the horn at all. We understand the theory of what's going on with the Thayer valve, but what's actually looking like inside? And how can we service it? How can we maintain it? Um, one of the great things about the Thayer valve is while they typically take a little bit more maintenance, it's a larger surface area, takes a little bit more oiling, you have to do it on a little bit more of a regular basis, but at the same time, it's actually a little bit more accessible. It's a little bit easier for us to actually get into versus, for example, a standard traditional rotor where there's extra work involved. You have to knock out bearing plates and when you put it back together, you have to make sure that all of, you know, everything's lined up. The witness marks are all working with us. So in, in certain respect, the Thayer valves, axial flow valves, are actually a little bit easier to maintain in that respect. So I thought, just take a moment, um, take a video here while I'm pulling this one apart here so you can just see a little bit how what that looks like and what's going on inside here. So with all of our Thayer valve horns, what we're going to have is we're going to have um, all of these attachments here that are going to allow us to remove this section right here from the rest of the horn. With the Thayer valve, this whole unit right here with all uh, our tubes here, and this whole section needs to lift right out to give us access to the valve here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove our two tuning slides here, okay, like so, like so. A lot of times. When you're pulling the tubes out, obviously, you're going to get a little bit extra pressure there. So by pressing down the valve, you're going to release some of that, make it a little bit easier, avoid that vacuum there. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the bell section here. So we're just going to take here like so. And there we go. Here like so. And carefully holding on here because once we remove that, the whole bell section is going to come right off. That leaves us with this component here. So, now with this here, we still have these connections here attached here. We need to take these off as well, which is why they're also threaded. And we're gonna go like so, and like so there. Perfect, now the one other thing we have to do is we have the linkage right here. Um, in order to get everything off here, we do have to remove the linkage. Now there are a couple different ways that these linkages are usually attached. Um, with it. Sometimes they're with um, actual um, Phillips screw heads. Um, in this case, this is actually um, a hex head needing an Allen wrench. So I'm just going to take my Allen wrench here quick and I'm going to get in there and just loosen that up a little bit. Good. And it's nice. One of the things we try to do with the shop here is obviously have a set of tools and a lot of players will have, especially with, for example, with the axial flow valves, they'll make sure that they have a set of Allen wrenches with it, um, a set of um, micro screwdrivers or the, what they call like the eyeglass screwdrivers are not a bad idea either because some of these are rather small components. Like that, good. And we're gonna let that come right out there like so here. And now the last component here is the collar. We have this threaded collar right here that just comes right off of here. Good, and we're gonna carefully unthread that. Good, in theory now, we should just be able to carefully give this just a little bit of a twist here. Yep, and the valve comes right apart here. So, we can see, so if you've never had a chance to check out the axial flow valve at all before, you can see it. one big cone here. We can see um, our two ports here, and how as we're moving through, especially when we're not using the valve, how this port runs straight from here into here, how when we turn it, all of a sudden we're rerouting the air through and up and out. So kind of interesting, and then you can see um, on the inside here what's happening as well. Um, in most cases, the valves are supported by the stem up on top, and there is a little bit of a wear surface on the bottom, on the bottom of this cone. This is one of the things, for example, with the uh, Bach um, infinity valve, what they've done here on the bottom of the casing where this sits in there, there is actually a ball bearing system in there, the bearing on there, it sits and it, it prevents a little bit of that wear on this. Um, with the all of the innovation, the, the, the design here, um, the taking more care in terms of the designing of the casing of itself, of the valve, you know, a lot of the issues, the old issues they used to have with the Thayer valves in the early days of its inception, 
have been avoided. Uh, we don't have to run into the, a lot of that, but a little bit of careful maintenance will help with that, help avoid a lot of that extra wear and tear. So taking the part of the valve again, really easy. Um, in this case, I was actually taking the part because the valve was a little bit frozen up and I was having trouble. I wasn't getting the oil quite where it needed to be. So doing it sometimes can help to, you know, get in, some of those you know, surface areas that you just can't get to otherwise. And then putting it back together is the same process, just reversed. Um, biggest thing is just making sure when you're initially putting it in, watching all of your attachment points here, making sure that everything is lining up just so. And again, what's nice about it is that because we have these attachment points here, we can make sure that the valve is coming right back to where it needs to be. Everything lines up so we don't have to worry about witness marks as much as with the, again, the traditional rotors, etc. So just a little bit of a quick video here. Thought you'd like to see this. Um, if you like this, please subscribe to our videos, subscribe to our blog posts off of the trombone shop website, uh, www.shoptrombones.com. Uh, take a look, you can like us on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and you can always let us know too. Feel free to reach out to us. If you have any questions, if you have a video you'd like to see, something we can talk about, we'd love to do that. So thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.